In this video, we're gonna cover some basic photography terms that every beginner should know. Let's do it. Aperture refers to the opening of the lens diaphragm through which light passes, and it's usually represented with an F number. So F 2.8 would be an aperture of 2.8. The lower the number, the larger the hole and more light comes in. The higher the number, the smaller the hole, less light. The aspect ratio of an image is the ratio of its width to its height. It's commonly expressed by two numbers separated by a colon, like 16 by 9. 3 by 2 is the most common for digital still photography, but you can crop your photos to different aspect ratios to give them distinctive looks. Bokeh, pronounced bokeh or bokeh, is simply the luscious out of focus blur you get when shooting with the lens at a wide aperture. Having a lens with an aperture of 2.8 or wider will help you get the most bokehlicious photos. For a quick example, look at this shot without bokeh, and now with bokeh. Burst mode, also known as continuous shooting mode, sports mode, or high speed mode, allows you to capture several shots in quick succession. This is helpful when your subject is moving. Some cameras shoot at eight frames per second in burst mode, while some can shoot at 20 frames per second or higher. Depth of field is the distance between the nearest and furthest objects in your scene that are acceptably sharp. A narrow or shallow depth of field will just give a small focal plane sharpness, whereas with a large depth of field, more of your image will be sharp. One of the main ways to adjust your depth of field is by adjusting the aperture of your lens. The lower the number, the more shallow the depth of field. The higher the number, the larger the depth of field. One other important factor is the distance between the camera and the subject. The closer you are to the subject, the smaller the depth of field will be. There is a few other factors that play a role like focal length and sensor size, but we're gonna keep this somewhat short and sweet. Exposure is how you get paid. Just kidding. Exposure is the amount of light that reaches your camera sensor. It's basically how light or dark your images will be depending on several factors. When you shoot in manual mode, your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO all help you achieve the desired exposure. Focal length, represented in millimeters, gives you a basic description of the lens. The length is a technical calculation and really boring, and not the actual length of the lens. But what it tells you is the angle of view, basically how much of your scene will be captured by the lens. So the longer the focal length, the less of the scene will be captured, or the more narrow your angle of view will be. It'll also be a higher magnification. The shorter the focal length, the wider the angle of view, and the lower the magnification. So when people refer to a wide angle lens, it's also a shorter focal length that captures a wide field of view. The flash sync synchronizes the firing of a flash with the opening of the shutter. Simple. You can use a cable to connect a strobe to the flash sync on your camera, and that'll help trigger the strobe with the release of the shutter. This is your hot shoe. It's a socket on the camera with direct electrical contacts for a flash or another accessory. This allows the accessory, like a flash, to communicate with the camera. The ISO, or ISO if you prefer, relates to the camera sensor sensitivity to light. Basically, if you need to brighten your photo, you would increase the ISO to make it more sensitive to the light. The issue you face when increasing the ISO too much is introducing noise to the photo. Some cameras are better than others in low light situations, so know your camera's limitations before the photo becomes unusably noisy. When photographers talk about shooting manual, they generally mean manual mode, which is adjusting the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed manually. It doesn't mean they're manually focusing their images. Shooting in manual mode is a good way to learn because it helps you understand how each parameter affects your photo. We recommend diving in and getting comfortable with manual mode if you want to take photography more seriously. We often see these terms used interchangeably, but they're actually very different from one another. Grain is specific to film, but it can be emulated with digital photography and software like Lightroom. Grain is kind of like a texture that brings film photos to life, but noise is specific to digital photography and describes the visual distortion in a photo. Basically, grain is dreamy and noise is not. RAW refers to a raw image file, which is minimally processed straight from the camera. They're raw because they haven't yet been processed and generally need to be converted to something like a JPEG or a TIFF format to be viewed and printed. What's good about it and why we recommend you shoot in RAW is because it stores the most amount of information from the image, like dynamic range and color. This is the highest quality you can capture and gives you the most flexibility when editing your images. The downside is it's a large file size and it takes time to process in software like Lightroom. Shutter speed is a measurement of the time that your shutter is open. The longer the shutter is open, the more light pours into your camera. 
Shutter speed is represented by whole numbers or fractions that determine how many seconds your camera shutter is open. For example, the number one means that your shutter will be open for one second, and the fraction 1 to 50th means that your shutter will be open for 1 to 50th of a second. This little doodad is your shutter release. It's the button you press to open your camera shutter. And when your shutter opens, light enters your camera and a photo is captured. Bada bing. Bada boom. A single lens reflex, or SLR, is a camera that typically uses a mirror and prism system that allows a photographer to look through the viewfinder and see exactly what will be captured. A digital lens reflex, or DSLR, combines the optics and mechanisms of a single lens reflex camera with a digital imaging sensor. This right here, that's the viewfinder. It shows the field of view of the lens and it's used for framing and focusing the picture. White balance is the color balance on a digital camera. If your photo is properly white balanced, it will look true to the color temperature of the real life setting in which you shot. I think that's all of them. We hope that was helpful. And if you're a beginner photographer looking for ways to improve your photography, we've got a bunch of videos linked in this description that could help you out. That's a true story. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you don't. See you guys in the next one. In this yeah, hang on. It's dusty. Okay. In this video, we're going to cover some basic photography terms and how they apply to you and your photography. <laughs> Sometimes you ever pull your phone and it's like looking at the fridge and you're like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the lower the number, the large. Ah. Oh. It's on a roll. Allows you to capture several shots in quick succession. Oh! Did I go, Galata?